Hi, Hi guys. Today we were wanted to talk about macronutrients. Um, so, so what they are? Yep. Um, how you work out what you need to be eating macronutrients wise. Yep. And then how we track it yep. every day. Um, so this is like a I think a common question when people start on keto, you I see all this stuff about macros. macros, what's in and you're like, what are macros? What do I have to do with macros? How do I work out my macros? <laughs> I mean, you might have heard of them because you've done yeah. like some nutrition courses and stuff, but I didn't even know what macros were yeah. when so we first started. Just start off by saying you don't need to be tracking all your macros and working out your macros and doing all of this. As long as you're looking at your carb count and trying to stay under 20 grams of carbs a day, that's all you need to do to be, like, that's what most people need to that's do is to follow the premise keto. of the keto diet is keeping your carbs as low as you can, preferably under 20 grams. Yes, but there may be circumstances where some people like to look at all of the different macros and track them, or you could be... Um, like why do we track ours because we eat too, too much, much food <laughs> yeah. because we we go through stages of yeah. tracking and not tracking yeah and when we feel that things are not snowballing so out of keto but to creep up but it's also easy to eat too much yeah even Especially on keto that for, for us that's what yeah. we found yeah um, and I think it's good to do it at the start for a period of time and then you kind of get the gist of oh, Okay, you know eggs fall in here, you know if I have this full because I mean most of the time we have similar lunches we do. and dinners So yeah. it's not like um, You need to be doing it all the time but at the moment. We're doing it um, Because I'm I need to be at a deficit because I still have weight to lose which doesn't want to leave me yeah. It really really likes me and wants to stay <laughs> So I've been trying to track and take it um, a bit more seriously, um, but it's hard because you have to limit what you're eating. Yeah. Um, so anyway, back to macronutrients. So pretty much there's three main macronutrients that you look at. So there's protein, carbohydrates, and fat. So the thing with the macronutrients and how it relates to calories is that each macronutrient, one gram of that macronutrient equals a certain amount of calories. So that's how you end up with your total kind of calorie allowance for the day, I guess. So, so protein, yeah. four calories per gram. Yes. Carbs, four, four calories, calories per gram. Fat, nine calories per gram. And I guess that's where the low fat dog bar kind of came in with the calories in, calories yeah, out. Yeah, because if you restrict your fat, you really restrict your calories. Um, but you can also go the other way. So, you know, butter, cream, cheese, rah rah that stuff adds up quickly calories-wise. And if you're looking to lose weight, um, I think you do need to be in a calorie deficit because you want your body to be using this yeah. fat on your body as yeah. part of your, you know, calories for the day, I mm. guess. So when, um, so then you have micronutrients and that's vitamins and minerals. So all that type of, so we don't normally track those so much because if you're eating like all different types of food, like Whole meats and vegetables well. and all that, that should have vitamins and minerals, but you can obviously look at all those things as well. But the three main macronutrients you want to be looking at is protein, fats and carbs. So to work out what you should be eating, and it's always going to be a guideline, like nothing's set in stone, um, a good way of doing it is a macro calculator. Yeah. So the one I like to use for us, and if anyone ever asks, I always recommend rule.me's keto calculator. Mm -hmm. I find it's pretty good. It's easy to use, mm -hmm. um, and I feel it works out pretty accurately what you need to be looking at it takes into account your um, activity level and that kind of thing. Yeah, so yeah. what do you need to enter in? So when you go log on to rule.me's keto we'll calculator, the yeah, down there below. Um, it'll ask your gender, height, weight, age. So, you know, they're pretty easy. Um, body fat percentage, it has some default ones there. Um, so you may not know your body fat yeah, percentage. Yeah, it also gives you some guidelines to figure out what yours might be. We've done like a... 
um, body scan. Body scan. That, yeah. So we know what ours are. But yeah, it gives you some guidelines on how to figure that out if you're not sure. Yeah. And you also choose your activity level. So if you're at a desk all day, you don't work out, sedentary, you don't go to the sedentary. gym. <laughs> sedentary. I, I think I choose moderate because I go to CrossFit three or four times a week. So I that's what I chose anyway. Yeah. Um, and you also get to choose your goal. Yeah. So if you're looking to lose, obviously you will choose lose. Some people like me are looking to just maintain. That will then work out your macros and your calories based on um, just maintaining. And some mm. people want to gain. Mm -hmm. So Muscle. I guess, yeah. yeah. Or if you're underweight and yes. you want to put on weight. Yeah. Um, so then that calculates it for you. What it calculates is your total calories per day and then it breaks it down into your macro um, yeah. nutrients. So what it will tell you for example is you need 100 grams of fat, 80 grams of protein and 20 grams of carbs. So then how that's how your total calories is worked out. So 100 times 9 that's your fat and then you know um, you how much I say for the protein 80 times 4 and then 20 times 4. So that's yeah. kind of how you get to your total calories based on your grams and, and macros. So it worked out for me that my calories should be about 2,000. My protein should be about 100, 101. Um, it, it bases it on net carbs as well. So 20, 20 net carbs. You can change that um, in the I think 20 grams of net carbs is a good place. To it start. seems to be working okay for us. And then fat, it had has me at 169 because I'm maintaining Didn't you so say the fat, fat first. No, protein. Ah, oh, right. I said calories, protein, oh, right. <laughs> carbs, fat. <laughs> so fat is 169, which is probably pretty high. That is. Um, but that's because I'm maintaining and my yes. calories are high. So Dan's not using the fat from her body. She's using the fat that she's eating. Whereas mine are much lower because I should be using the fat from my body. Yeah. Okay, so you've gone to rural.me, you've put in all your details and worked out this. Um, your macro breakdown and now you've got your calories, your fat grams, your protein grams and your carbs. Now what do we do? Now what do you do? <laughs> so you want to use a tracker. There's a couple out there. At the moment I'm preferring Chronometer. Um, we've used a few. We've used Chronometer, MyFitnessPal, Carb Car Manager. Yeah. Chronometer seems to have like a lot of the Australian products in it. Um, that's one reason that I like it. MyFitnessPal has a lot of the Australian products in it, but the problem with MyFitnessPal is that people can enter in their own and they get saved and they're and accessed they go by into everybody. The big database. So, so sometimes you might look up, or, I don't know, bacon, the particular brand of bacon that you have. It could be in there five times with five different things. Mm. So that's where Chrono it gets confusing and you can enter things in incorrectly, leading yourself up the garden path. Yeah. So Chronometer does not have that feature. It's They enter them themselves. Yeah. So they're when, all kind of approved as proper products. You can also custom enter your own, but they are only accessible to you and not to everybody else. The other thing that Chronometer does, um, I haven't had them do any of this for any of the ones I've submitted yet, but you can scan the barcode. If it doesn't come up, you can ask that they um, put it Add into it in. Chronometer. Yeah. You take a photo of the barcode and a photo of the front and back and submit it to them. I love that yeah, idea. that is a good idea. And another good thing about Chronometer is that it does track all your micronutrients yes. as well. So even if you're not looking to specifically make sure you hit all your micronutrients, which would be probably quite time consuming, you can see, like, and it gives you a guide, like, oh, you know, okay, I'm doing really well with iron, but maybe I should look at adding more. But, you know, it's, I just think it's interesting to yeah. have it in there. It doesn't hurt. So once you start using Chronometer, you can download the app on your phone and you can also just use it on your desktop. Um, you just log in chronometer.com. Um, we'll put a link at the bottom. Um, once you've done that, you need to go and put in the targets that you calculated into Chronometer. So it lets you put in each, all yes. four of them? Yes. Or I guess it works out the calories based on You just put in all, all of them. Okay. That's what I did for both of us. Mm -hmm. So I just put in what our results were into Chronometer and it was ready to go. And now we just log our food every day. Mm -hmm. So everything that we eat gets put into the log. 
the benefit of having it on your phone is that wherever it's you are, with you. you can just pop it in. We like to plan it out. Yeah, I think that is a big, like a big, I don't know, an easy, it makes it easier for yourself. If you just add stuff in as you're going throughout the day, then you get to dinner and all of a sudden you've got no carbs, but you need all this fat and, and or, or something like that. And you're a stick of butter. <laughs> but, I mean, yeah, I mean, that... I guess that's a I exaggeration. Don't know. I think yeah. It, what we would normally do is, I guess, dinner is generally our bigger meal, and where we probably eat more carbs because we tend to have you know meat veggies. and veggies yeah. and stuff like that. So we'll put that in first, and then work back, and then I can tweak. You know, on my lunch, okay, I'll have a bit less fat at lunchtime because I'm having a bigger dinner or something like that. Um, the so other benefit is just to meal planning in general. Yeah, is that it's there you're yes. not making the decision on the fly yes. it's been entered sometimes a couple of days before for yeah. us so sometimes yeah. dinners especially we will sit down sunday night put do in our dinners list. Yeah, yeah put in our dinners for the week mm -hmm. you don't have to do this but this seems to work well yeah. for us then it's not you're getting to the afternoon of that day what are we having for dinner or yeah, um, you're making decisions on the fly. Yeah, yeah. We personally do a lot better when the decisions have been made. Also, you can put in your dessert first and work back. Like maybe if you want to. We don't recommend that. A bit of Lily's that. chocolate or something. Pencil that in first. Make sure that's covered. <laughs> Dinner goes in first, dessert, and then there may be room for lunch. Just joking. But in saying, I mean, this is all guidelines. Like you don't need to be doing all of this stuff. All you need to be doing is looking at the back of the packet, seeing how many carbs are in everything that you're eating keeping a track that way you can do it on a piece of paper and a pen if you want to but this is a good guide for people who want to dial it in a little bit yeah who want to be tracking macros but don't have any idea of what they need to be doing or get a little bit lost yeah and when you're getting started it's good to know because i guess with the, your macros overall your carbs it's it's a limit so you don't have to eat your 20 grams you don't of have carbs. to hit your carbs <laughs> you don't have to hit your carbs but you don't want to be going over that all the time if yeah. you go over it every, you know a couple of grams every couple of days it's not the end of the world um, your protein you do want to be hitting that because it's important for your muscle you know maintenance and growth so so your carbs is a limit you must uh, your protein you that's the like goal. a goal you want to try and hit yeah. that and then the fat is to satiety so you don't have to eat all of your fat if you're not hungry yeah um, and I see comments around that a lot, like, yes. "Oh, I'm not meeting my fat." Yeah, don't it, worry it's about not the a goal. fat. It's just a, it's, it's more just of a there limit to help well. you yeah. um, find just a tidy level. Mm. Yeah, yeah and, and with me, I think because I've lost a lot of weight, and I haven't kind of reset what I'm eating because what I was probably eating when we first started, I was eating a lot more. But, because, but I was it. so much bigger, like, and it's like now yeah. I have to be eating a lot less. So I have to track it because it's very easy for me to eat too much, especially because we're so used to eating a lot of high fat foods. Like I went to have some macadamias with my coffee the other morning and half of, so 25 grams, which was about eight macadamias was like 200 calories. <laughs> I didn't realize how many calories that you could eat so quickly when you're eating high fat foods. So the calories debate in the keto world, some people will say calories don't matter and other people will say that they do. I think we're on the side where that they matter. Yeah, I think and I think it depends on you. Like if you've never had any issues around food and restriction and you can easily not eat if you're not hungry, then you probably don't need to worry about calories because you'll naturally, like, we're not great with natural satiety. And that's okay, like, we really acknowledge that. Like, we try our best, but it's, you know, it's a work in progress and I need to have a limit. Otherwise, I can easily overeat. And yeah. would you agree yeah. if that's the same? I'm the same. Yeah, yeah. so if it, it's something you need to learn. If you've always had, restriction or periods of you know not restricting badly then yeah it's it's, it's something I, that we're still I agree. trying to work out am i hungry or not or do i just want something to eat because a lot of times i just want something doing this for two years yes and it, that part hasn't come to us and for some people maybe more men find that part easier yeah yeah 
Anyway, anyway, so we seem to have gone a bit off track mm -hmm. here, but we hope we've helped explain macros, about macros for and you. How to find what you should be eating yes. and how to track it. Yes, and what they are. Mm -hmm. So if you have any questions about macros, please pop them in the comments below and we'll do our best to answer them. But I really appreciate you watching this video and we'll see you next time. Bye.